Hello everyone and welcome to a really wild game that features uh, an even greater move. Uh, from 1914 it was played in Italy between Dr. Zygbert Taras and, uh, well, uh, if you've seen this game, for example, if you've read about it in old books, uh, it's always uh, uh, titled as uh, Zygbert Taras versus the Allies, but it's actually, the Allies uh, are known people uh, and the, the strongest of the Allies was David Marotti who will later uh, become Italian champion in 1921 and he's also a professor of literature uh, and philosophy. I, I don't know if he was at the time the game was played, but he did become one uh, later on. But the other three gentlemen that joined David Marotti in his, uh, well, uh, quest for victory against Zygbert Taras uh, are Napoli, De Simone, and Del Judas. Uh, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly as it is uh, Italian, uh, but it's uh, w one against four. But always when you have like, a, if one person plays against a uh, hundred people, you will always most likely played the moves that the strongest of them suggests, which in this case is David Marotti. Uh, so I think most of the moves uh, are, are his, I imagine. I don't know. I, I don't think they had like a, a let's each play one move. Now, why I'm showing this game, uh, I've seen it many times. I've seen it uh, when I first started uh, learning about chess also from books. And this, this is a very famous game. So, uh, of course, it's featured in, in a lot of them. And... Uh, uh, I never knew what the what the well what the actual uh, so-called chess device here in this game uh, used was called, and it's actually called a plashuta. Now, uh, just to help you out with the with the actual uh, word, there it is, a plashuta, uh, and I've never heard about this uh, well uh, word or, or or the meaning. Uh, it, it's actually. Uh, 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 okay, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get to it why why it's called that way and uh, what it means. Uh, but basically, uh, it's uh, well. Let let's just check out the game and then when we reach the position, then we're gonna discuss it. So like I said, uh, the game played in Italy in 1914, Zygbert Tarash versus the Allies. Uh, but now you know who is uh, uh, playing uh, well. Board one for the Allies, so to say, David Marotti. Who uh, this is not a photo uh, of him from when the uh, when the game was played. This is a photo from 1922, so some eight years after the actual game was played. So he will uh, look a bit younger uh, in this actual game. But okay, uh, here Tarash opens with f4. He opens with the bird opening. We have d5, and it's actually a very nice game. Uh, sorry about that. So grabbing the center, we have knight to f3 and c5. So grabbing a lot of uh, central squares here, we have e3 uh, and now knight to c6 and bishop to b5, putting pressure on the on the knight here. Bishop d7, continuing development and Tarash castle, uh, Tarash castles. Uh, we have e6 and now b3. Tarash prepares the fianchetto, the dark square bishop. We have queen to c7, developing, most likely preparing the castle queen side, as none of the king side the pieces have been developed yet. Uh, and bishop to b2. And it's interesting, this position has never again been reached uh, in, in any other game. So f6, uh, making this bishop uh, a, a bit less useful, as now uh, it's kind of a kind of a problem uh, for this bishop. And also, you might be interested in, in playing e5 sometimes in the future, so it uh, it will come in handy. Uh, and here, c4 by white. Uh, now challenging this pawn, and uh, white, uh, well, black has to decide how to deal with this as knight to c3 is coming. You're going to have a lot of pressure here on d5. So here, knight e, knight c to e7, uh, getting more defense to this d5 pawn, and also preparing to trade bishops here. We have knight to c3, nicely continuing to pile up on the d5 pawn, and now knight to h6. Now that this knight occupies d7 square, you have to find how to develop this knight. So knight h6, and now rook to c1 putting the rook on the same uh, file as the queen, as if the position opens up, uh, this could allow for some uh, for some nasty tactics. So here, bishop captures on b5, we have knight captures attacking the queen and queen d7. So this is probably what the allies were going for to get the queen uh, off, of the, off of the c file. Uh, we have queen to e2, finally white develops the queen, connects the rooks, and now knight to c6, getting the knight back as the d5 pawn is uh, sufficiently defended, and you also want to put some pressure on, on d4. So here uh, we have c captures on d5, uh, we have e captures on d5, and now e4, and here... Uh, black has to decide what to do here. It's a problem because uh, you don't want to allow the position to open up. Your king is still in the center of the board, so you have to react to this. You could capture here, for example, captures, captures, and bishop e7, but it looks uh, it looks kind of weird. You've opened up the position, your king is still here uh, in the center of the board. So here we have queenside castles, uh, now getting the king to safety. 
Uh, and now not capturing here, but rather e5. If you capture here, you pretty much solve all of black's problems. The queen is now nicely centralized and you don't really have any uh, any any good moves here for white to, 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 to grab some initiative. So instead, uh, Tarash keeps the, the, the center closed and he goes for e5. And now, okay, uh, the queen uh, is not centralized, the queen is still on d7 and you are threatening to capture on f6. So what do you do here? Uh, king to b8 is always a nice prophylactic move, but black decides to kick the knight away from this active square. So we have a6 attacking the knight and the knight back to c3. And now the very aggressive b5 and uh, well, what do you do now with white? Black uh, is not afraid. He he started expanding uh, on the queen side as well, uh, and the white wants to attack on the queen side. So it's uh, it's good for both of them. Uh, we have a4 saying, okay, we either open up the a file or you have to advance the pawn. So b4 is played, and now knight back to d1. Uh, as we all know, the strongest move uh, and the hardest one to find is a move with the knight back. So here, knight d1, uh, the knight will be remaneuvered to e3, and then later on, uh, where black allows. So here, king to b7. Now that the knight uh, uh, was moved and th this uh, pawn has been advanced to b4, the a6 pawn is hanging, so black needs to defend it. We have king to b7, and now uh, e captures an f6. Uh, it looks a bit uh, scary since uh, the bishop can capture here and attack both of the rooks, but black has everything planned out, or, or so uh, black thinks. Uh, or rather, so they think. Uh, but after G captures bishop captures, now yes, the two rooks are under attack. But here comes rook e8, uh, uh, attacking white's queen, so you're not in time to grab the rook on h8. Uh, we have knight to e3. Here white says, okay, uh, you, you, I don't have to worry about d4 because your rook is hanging. So here, rook to g8, now uh, getting the, the rook out of the way, and now queen to d3, not allowing d4 to trap the knight. Uh, and now comes uh, knight to g4. The problem with the d4 now, although it looks uh, looks kind of interesting, is that you can just ignore the pawn, play whatever you want, and you, black cannot capture as the queen would be hanging. So here we have knight to g4, now trying to trade off knights to get the queen into the attack, but here uh, Tarash does exactly that. Uh, you, you might think, okay, you could grab the d5 pawn, but then after knight captures an f6, the queen is actually defended, so you just blunder a piece. So here, instead, we have knight captures on g4, queen captures, now threatening checkmate, and Tarash defends with rook to f2. So the g2 pawn is nicely defended, and now uh, the d5 pawn needs to be defended. So queen back to d7, and now white needs to figure out a way how to continue the attack. We have knight to e5 attacking the queen, and here black decides to trade. We have captures on e5, bishop captures on e5, and now rook to c8, as white is most likely to... Uh, try and uh, do some pressure uh, along the c-file, probably move the queen, play d3, double up here and go after uh, after the, the king. So black also prepares to defend against this. Here, queen to f3. Uh, the, the strongest move by far, you have to make room for d3 to be played to get this rook over to c2. Uh, and uh, black doesn't really have a, a, a good way of doing any attacking. This bishop and pawn combo uh, is, is a you know marvelous defensive structure. And with the rook on f2, well, uh, basically on the second rank guarding the g2 pawn, there's not much black can do. So here we have king to b6, adding another defender to the c5 pawn here, and now d3. d3 is a very nice move as it prevents black from executing c4 at any point, uh, but also you just want to play rook f to c2 and put more pressure along the c file. So bishop to h6, now that the c5 pawn is uh, defended sufficiently, black also tries to develop. Uh, white will not be able to start pushing the past f pawn as the rook is still on c1, uh, but white doesn't care. Uh, white uh, to completely abandons the plan of pushing the, uh, the past f pawn. This is a very nice defensive structure, like we mentioned. So rook f to c2, and now, uh, now the uh, fun really starts here. Uh, we have d4. There, there could be some ideas of... Uh, uh, maybe maybe like capturing and then playing something like uh, bishop to d4 to, to pin the rook after rook recaptures. For the moment it's not possible, but uh, just to prevent all of that, black just goes d4. And now uh, black says, I don't have to worry about this anymore. Uh, there's no way for you to capture and my c5 pawn is defended sufficiently. But here uh, white finds a brilliant breakthrough. White plays a5 with check. And now the problem is uh, you have to play something. Problem is if you capture the pawn, then you just get uh, rook captures on c5 as the c5 rook is not defended, captures, captures, and after 
uh, you you move the king, you just play rook to c7, attack the queen, and there is no defense. Uh, black is completely busted here. So what actually happened after a5 check, uh, the allies decided to play king to b5, but now, now uh, we reach the position where the, uh, let's uh, bring it up uh, one more time, where the plashuta is possible. So uh, feel free to pause the video and uh, well find this uh, brilliancy that all, almost never occurs in actual play. It's more of a thing that you will find in, in uh, you know, constructed chess problems uh, or, or chess puzzles. Uh, but here it actually happened in an actual game. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and find this brilliant winning idea uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. With best defense, it's actually made in five. Uh, so, you know, uh, have at it. So uh, for those of you uh, who were able to do it, congratulations on solving your first Plashuta. And for those of you who already knew the solution because this is a very famous game, maybe maybe you just learned that this was actually a Plashuta. Uh, and uh, well, for everyone else, uh, the move is Bishop to C7. And this is a, uh, wow. I mean, I, I remember seeing this move in, in old books, but I never really gave it the, <laughs> this much thought uh, because it's brilliant. Uh, you block the queen's defense of the b7 square, and now queen b7 is possible. You also block the rook's defense of the c5 pawn, uh, and now uh, rook captures on c5 becomes possible. And now the plashu it, it it's a plashuta uh, because uh, you've uh, you've gave up a piece. It it also works if you give up a pawn. I've seen some puzzles where you give up a pawn. It's also considered a plashuta, but I don't uh, I don't know. They didn't seem uh, as impressive as when you give up a piece. So this bishop to c7 is uh, one of the nicest I've seen. There, there is also another one that I thought was very impressive, but uh, we might show that uh, some other time. But here, bishop to c7, incredible, uh, because uh, whichever piece captures the rook or the queen uh, gets in the way of the other piece, and that's just crazy. It's it's also possible, like with the queen and the bishop, when they go on the same diagonal, or, or with the two rooks that are... Uh, you know, using the, the same file to, to, to go for the piece. Uh, but here, uh, it doesn't work because, like I said, okay, queen b7 is possible, now rook, rook captures on c5 is possible, uh, but capturing the bishop is not possible because if queen captures on c7, then you get the very nice rook captures on c7, and now you can no longer guard the b7 square. Queen has to capture, and now after this check, it's all over. You have to either play queen b6 and then just queen captures his checkmate or you capture on a5 and then rook to a1 is checkmate. So that's one way to go about it after bishop to c7. But the queen doesn't have to capture. Maybe the rook can capture and then we also try something. Problem is after rook captures uh, we get this brilliancy of queen to b7 check. And now again there's not much to do. King captures on a5 runs into rook to a1 check. And uh, that's not uh, that's not uh, you know happening. Okay, we can even show it if you don't believe me. Rook a1 check. Only move queen blocks and then rook captures his checkmate. So we're not gonna uh, dwell too much on that. Uh, however, if rook captures here, then it's the instant rook captures on c5 checkmate because now the rook also covers the a5 square. So uh, really, this bishop to c7 move, uh, quite the brilliancy, uh, show it to your friends at the bar in the library, they will be immensely impressed by your great knowledge. And uh, well, the, the third option, of course, the one we have to check, uh, okay, if you can't capture with the rook, if you can't capture with the queen, must we capture at all? Uh, yes, uh, because if you don't, there's simply no move for you to play. Wh what are you going to play? This is the threat of checkmate. You can't allow queen to b7. Uh, like, w whatever you try here simply doesn't work. And uh, it, it would be pointless to even try playing something here. I, I, I even have no idea wh what you could play here. So th there really isn't a move. Like, how do you, f how do you defend against this? You, you, you simply don't. And there, there's no other move for you to play. You, you could drag this out, maybe uh, do some silly moves, but that's, I mean, that, that, that would be pointless. So bishop to c7, uh, it's, uh, it's almost magical how this, uh, how this move ends the game. And this is the, let's show it for the third time. Remember, this is a plashuta. So, you know, today when you're, you know, enjoying your Saturday with your friends, not at the bar as, you know, the situation in the world and everything, uh, tell them about Plashuta as it's, uh, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I, I learned the term today myself, even though I like uh, do chess stuff uh, quite often, 
pretty much all the time, uh, but I've never actually heard the, the term, even though I've seen this game. So it's uh, always, uh, always very enjoyable for me uh, to learn new stuff, especially a new word. I mean, how often do you learn a new word? Uh, but yeah, uh, like I said, I will put uh, some useful materials on the Plashuta in the description below so you can check that out. And yeah, if you ever see this in a book or somewhere, uh, Zygbert Tarash versus the Allies, you will know who the Allies were. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, it for this, uh, the, the Plashuta. So uh, that's uh, the Plashuta. I, I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Arian Delange, uh, Pablo Mohan, Stephen Hobbs, uh, Neil Cosford, and Anna Androne for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage uh, of the uh, Morphe saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world, uh, like the like the the, the new. Uh, Magnus Carlsen tournament uh, that starts tomorrow. So uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.